Do you live in a fantasy world? Want to feel like you personally succeeded on the basis of the performance and accomplishment of others? Do you want all the best players to be on your team? Well, if you play Fantasy League of Legends at eSports Pools, that could be the case for you in all regards. You can also bet, since you know, T you know TSM's always going to win those games, right? And by the way, you'll get sick odds for the World's games, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> now, when I say why nobody likes TSM fans, we're obviously not speaking about all TSM fans. The ones that don't say anything or the ones that speak with the flair but don't seem to be obnoxious and don't really even resent, represent TSM fans. They're just commenting on other things. Yeah, those people are fine. Those people aren't annoying anyone. And therefore, those people, in a way, don't exist, just like fans of other teams don't as a collective exist when they're not being massively objective. We're talking now about the visible face of TSM fandom. The people on Reddit and Twitter who just have shit post after shit post and ridiculous, delusional, biased comments and attack others and all on the basis, clearly, of that element that makes up their identity that says they are a TSM fan. Because this is where, we've got to be realistic here, this is the most obnoxious fan base, not just in Western League of Legends, but the history of Western League of Legends. Consistently, year on year, and with a similar flavour to how and why they are obnoxious, annoying. Now, I will say, Fnatic fans got close to this level when they had their team in the summer of Season 5, who went 18-0 and, and eventually went on to finish Top 4 at Worlds and perhaps even had a chance to make the final or win Worlds. Not a massive chance, but had a chance certainly on like a lot of Western teams. But hey, at least that one point in time... Fnatic were pretty godlike. They were arguably the best Western team we've ever seen, at very least comparable, if you go years and years back enough, to what CLGU and Moscow 5, etc. were. That's really the only period that us Fnatic fans were that out of control. Now, what's funny is domestically, Fnatic throughout the history of LCS have been the TSM of European League of Legends. They had the era with Xpeke and Sars. They had the era where it was Huni and Rainover. But actually, except for that season where they went 8 0, their fans were never as bad. It doesn't matter that they had the same impetus and the same justification to be as bad domestically and in talk, talking to fans outside of just Europe, but they weren't. They weren't on this kind of ridiculous level. TSM fans will be just as terrible as the Fnatic fans I'm talking about now and other TSM fans in splits where their team isn't even doing well in the split, in splits where their team doesn't win the LCS, where they're not a top seed, where they lose in the final, where they, they fail to place highly at Worlds. In other words, <laughs> every year. Now, <laughs> the theory that people always put forwards goes that fan bases... You know, they're just based on whether or not the team's winning. That's how obnoxious they are. First of all, as I just said, that's not the case with TSM. But I actually have a similar theory in general, which is that I've noticed when I followed games for decades, that, for example, let's say in the early 2000s in Counter-Strike, Swedish Counter-Strike was easily the best. Their best teams would always win the big tournament, would always place very highly. In fact, most of their best teams would place highly, kind of like the Koreans of League of Legends. Now, my theory always was from spectating those people, when then Swedish teams weren't the best and when other countries were just as good and sometimes better, was that a lot of fan bases don't seem as bad when their team is winning. Because what happens is the stupid people make comments which actually, in the face of what the realistic consensus of the experts are, aren't that dissimilar. Like, yeah, they're not going into detail, they're not really explaining why they think this, etc. But their comments don't seem as stupid because when they're like, this player's the best and that team is the best and he's a star player, well, yeah, they, they sort of get covered by the fact that they're right, even if maybe they're not right for the, the correct reasons, you know, they don't know why they're right. But my theory was always when those teams and regions then aren't as good, when the people then say the same things, that's when you realise, oh, actually, that guy, he didn't actually, he wasn't reasonable before, his team was just winning. Now, funnily enough, that's not the case with TSM. They're a rare instance that I've ever seen. I mean, Fnatic was an example of this kind of phenomenon. TSM are a rare instance where their fans seem to behave the exact same way and apply the same delusional effect, whether they're losing or winning. Now, what's ridiculous, the reason why I say it, apply the same delusional effect, is because when they're winning, suddenly 
it's like they just take the delusion factor. Let's say a delusion factor for a TSM is like plus 10 to any kind of metric. So when they're losing, they plus 10 and their players are still the best. But when they're winning, God forbid. Now suddenly Bjergsen isn't just the best mid in, in LCS or in the West. Suddenly he's the best mid. It's clear by far. And Jensen isn't even allowed to be close. He's not even be allowed to be a peer or a legitimate candidate to be as good as Bjergsen. Or he can't be better in a specific way or for two weeks or for a split because Bjergsen... Even if you admit he's on a worse team, because you only dare compare them 1v1, and suddenly it has to be Bjergsen because he's on a TSM team, right? Suddenly all role players in TSM become god tier. They become elite world class players on the basis that TSM's winning, and, and these are fans of TSM, and they apply the TSM delusion effect. Now, when I say obnoxious, the recourse of TSM fans is always straight to insults or cooking up an ulterior motive as to why someone would say something that they could perceive to be against or not in favor of TSM players or TSM fan base. If you just have a differing opinion, their first recourse is to insults and obnoxious behavior. It's in the vein of how like you'd imagine a 13 year old diehard fangirl of some popular boy band would speak about someone who doesn't think that their favorite member is the best in the band or prefers, God forbid, a rival band. The level of abuse that TSM fans will dish out goes beyond anything I've experienced from the fan base of any other team in Western League of Legends over the last six years. Now, people will claim this isn't the case, but guess what? First of all, most of those people are TSM fans. Secondly, the other sets of people are people trying to play devil's advocate and be like, well, I see a lot of abuse from uh, all games. And, you know, you see, whenever a team's on top, you see their fans get a bit obnoxious. Now, I'll tell you here, I have significantly more experience in countering this than anyone saying that. A lot of those people just happen to read whatever reds they feel like three reading every now and then. It's whatever little anecdotal information pops to mind. My job for the last, well, I mean, in, in League of Legends only, from... Late 2012 onwards, my job has involved reading League of Legends to stay up to date, to get all the information. At the time when I didn't watch the game as much, I was learning it. I needed to get as much information as I could. I have studied and passed Reddit, massively so, for years and years. And looking at all kinds of different levels, I don't just stay on the front page. I want to get as much info as I can. <clears throat> I have, now at this point in time, a massive amount of followers on Twitter. It's my over 200k. The amount of insults and abuse that comes from this one fan base dwarfs any other in Western League of Legends. Like, I always, when people just say, like, yeah, but why do you just ignore that stuff? Like, why, why do you have to bring it up? I always give this analogy, right? So, in the early days of the internet, I used to always read everything, even when I was a journalist, but that was back when I had 4,000 Twitter followers. That was back when my content was on sites, but it was a much smaller community of more hardcore fans and players. So, back then, the whole point of why I could read everything is because if people constantly insulted me and tried to degrade my work and downplay it and lied about me, it would be a few people. It would be a handful of people. It would be the odd asshole. So guess what? Yeah, that doesn't bother me. I, don't, I, I have a strong enough personality and sense of identity that I don't really mind. If other people can have their other opinion, I think that's fine. I'm not really a fan of people lying and being unethical and, and in that sense literally like libeling and slandering me, but... I certainly think people can can be critical and sometimes negative, but if it's the odd comment, yeah, I, I, I'm fine with that. I can just roll, rolls off my back, no problem. I always give this analogy though. A lot of people might be like that. Like even though most people wouldn't fit this analogy, you could imagine it at least. Imagine they're walking down the street and you walk in and one guy just says, hey asshole. And you don't, you're like, who the fuck is it? What, what the fuck? Or, you, you know, you walk along and because you're wearing the uh, t-shirt of a band, someone says, that band's fucking shit, you, you fucking retard. And you go, whatever. The point is, each of these in, in isolation, you could just go, well, no big deal. They don't know who I am, whatever. You know, I don't really know who the fuck they are, whatever. It's just an opinion. Anyone can have an opinion. Well, that affect me. But if you walk down that street and seemingly, based on who the vocal people were, every person who spoke to you was like, asshole, you must fucking really hate that other band. Oh, pathetic little fanboy of that team. If every person, you dickhead, there was, and you'd walk down the street, and by the time you got to the end of the street, like 300 people had said it, and by the end, because they're all popping up, it's just a mass of people, yeah, blah, blah, blah. it's all, you can hear it all, it's in a crowd, a milling crowd, it's getting louder and louder. Eventually, you would just at the end be like, shut the fuck up, what the fuck is this? 
That's the reason why people go mental at TSM fans and why they don't go mental at other fan bases. Because their fan bases aren't doing that to the same degree, therefore it doesn't elicit the same extreme reaction. And the voices, the chattering voices of the pleb plebeious masses aren't the same for the other fan bases as with the TSM fans. <clears throat> so... Obviously, this all began in 2012 when TSM had their massive success in League of Legends and it has never stopped since. They had popularity before that, but it wasn't anything on this level. That's when the bandwagon got rolling and every motherfucker's been jumping on it since who's become a TSM fan. So you will see people defending this kind of behavior and saying, ah, yes, but you have to understand again. But by the way, people who use Devil's Advocate, I notice, they just tend to be people who they aren't idiots. They've got like a little bit of intelligence or nous about them. And they think, right, well, since most people are arguing this one way, is there a possible way I could argue against it that wouldn't be totally inaccurate or logically incorrect and therefore since i've come up with a slightly different way of seeing it you know look at this look who i am i'm i'm the one who sees the way things are and but as a result there'll be many areas where they have no expertise in that area and they'll end up essentially just arguing something like, yeah but what if and then it's like well no it's actually not the case and we, here's all the reasons why yeah but what if you know what if it's like it's just a ridiculous case of whataboutism so <clears throat> The fact that a few C9 fans suck doesn't vaguely come close to, you know, half a decade of TSM fans being ridiculously obnoxious. And again, scale doesn't work. It's not that there are less C9 fans, therefore it's less obnoxious. I can tell you, C9, CLG, these are teams that at differing periods of time have had massive success in League of Legends. And yet their fan base, they have had significantly fewer, and we're talking about within scale, amounts of douche fans and this type of behavior. Like, I can tell you from personal experience, there are very few, even when CLG is at their peak or C9 are at their peak, there are, I could count, like, on two hands the amount of nutters who were fans of those teams that messaged me or would say insults to me. That, like, we're talking about ridiculous ratios of, like, maybe it's, like, 50 ridiculous, obnoxious TSM fans to every one from C9 or CLG. And by the way, we're talking about the other mega successful teams there. Remember, I said when C TSM's not successful, they still have insane amounts of ridiculous fans who are going nuts on everyone. Also, the tone is very different. <clears throat> the fans from the other teams might argue sometimes in an obnoxious manner, but it more, more might be like, ah, oh, shut up talking shit about Jensen, blah, 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 whatever. Like, Usually they just give differing opinions. Sometimes they might be mildly insulting. There are very few who are complete nutters. And they definitely go, don't go with the tone of many TSM fans. Like, ah, you just hate the fact that your whole career is a failure and you are irrelevant. And that's why you must attack TSM to get any money off clicks, you clickbait piece of shit asshole. Oh, and also, you have autism. Aha, your autism is showing. Like, that's TSM fans only, I'm afraid. That's, not, that's not, not coming overwhelmingly from any other fan base in the West. Now, let's talk a bit about the mentality of the TSM fans, because when you get this down, you really see why, essentially, people don't like them. So first and foremost, arrogance. Let's go ahead and start there, right? They speak as if they were on TSM or had accomplished anything themselves because TSM won in a video game tournament that they watched with their eyes while in their mind thinking, I sure hope TSM wins this TSM. They think that means they accomplished something. Like, for example, they will argue against me in a point I've made talking about my career and my accomplishments as though, you know, the scales were like what I've accomplished in my career, how much money I've made, things I've done. And then on their side of the scales is like how many championships TSM has. Is that what it's like? No, no, no. All that stuff's on my side. None of that stuff's on your side. You as a person and your points have, have none of that stuff. That's on like Reginald's side and Bjergsen's side and Double side. On yours is just whatever the fuck you did in your life. So, you know, is this mine over here? Oh, what, what the fuck's that on top? It's like, there's nothing on yours. It, it, why would you put all the TSM accomplishments on your side of the equation? Just doesn't mean anything, right? Likewise, if you critique TSM, remember, because in their mind, they act as though they're on the, t on the team. They start reacting personally. They, they're offended personally. It's not, not on the basis of your arguments or they disagree and here's why. They, if you were to critique TSM, not necessarily attack or say TSM shit, you just critique them, you give honest, rational discussion about them. You must be jealous, or you secretly hate, or you openly hate TSM. They're reminiscent in this respect of New England Patriot fans. Because you know New England Patriot fans have that mentality of like, everyone hates us because we're the best, and we, we win all the time, and they're just jealous. No, bro. Everyone hates arrogance, ridiculous homers, 
and fucking teams that have cheated repeatedly throughout the years and you consistently deny that they've cheated in any sense, even though it wouldn't affect you personally or the game results because we can't go back and reverse the cheating at this point. That's what people don't like. The fuck that you've won all the time isn't why they don't like you. Teams like the fucking Pittsburgh Steelers have won a whole bunch of championships. The fact, well, I, I won't say the Dallas Cowboys because they can be pretty obnoxious and they were essentially the original TSM fans of, of American football, right? But there's teams that have won many championships that don't have anywhere near this level of abuse given to them. The rampant insecurity of TSM fans has got to be one of the most annoying things. Because while they are so obnoxious, they attack en masse to a degree no one else does. And with a vitriol and a tone that is disgusting that no one else employs and mass harass people, they themselves have this persecution complex, this rampant insecurity that, first of all, any disagreement with them or things that they happen to like is attacking them personally and is a personal offense. And then they have this ridiculous persecution complex in line with what I said about the Patriots fans. Like, for example, they think that r slash League of Legends is this mass conspiracy that harasses TSM fans and mocks them unfairly, even though they make up the largest group of fans on that subreddit and routinely and consistently mass downvote content and comments which are even slightly critical of TSM. They approach... Wait a sec. The, they have this approach that stupid people have where you model the world and everyone else in it based on you and your code of ethics and how you would behave. And you can't imagine anyone else behaves differently or would behave differently. So, for example, how they attack you ends up betraying their own thinking about the world. So they would attack players on the basis that they're jealous of the fact that that player is really good and doesn't play for TSM or is better than the player on TSM or because they hate the personality of the player. So they'll accuse you of as much. They will blindly support a player and a team purely just because it's that player and team, no matter what the level of form of the player is and team, etc. And because it's the team they like, not for any other reason. Hence, they will claim you're doing that when you talk about another player that you think is good or that is better than a TSM player. They will attack others on Reddit and Twitter. And thus, if the consensus doesn't at any point in time completely warp to fit the TSM fan base delusional mentality, then suddenly it's them who are being abused and outnumbered and downvoted, even though everyone who's not in the consensus gets downvoted, and usually the consensus fits TSM. By the way, they're delusional, though, about the fact that the consensus should always fit TSM, and part of it isn't their fault. Reddit chamber already acts as an echo chamber, especially Reddit, rather, already acts as an echo chamber, especially if you get enough people on there because obviously like the mass just takes over ridiculously so as you don't see that on very small subs about like a small band or something people are a lot more reasonable but reddit is a massive echo chamber for positive tsm content and i can tell you why on a literal level of experience where i know content creators and others who are critical of tsm or don't think tsm's as good as people think but won't bother creating content saying as much because they know that with mass down voting it's not going to be as successful. So they just go, you know what? I'll spend my time on something else, a different topic I'm more interested in. I won't write that article. So they know that the impact on their career will be significantly worse in terms of writing stuff against TSM or critical of TSM than if they just ignore it or, God forbid, some of them cynically just find a way to write stuff positive about TSM to get all those plebs on their side. They know that it has a level where it impacts their success directly because the TSM fans act like spurned lovers who once you dared to critique them or say something, they'll now follow you around. They'll go to other threads about your work, even though it has nothing to do with TSM. They'll go to other threads where you're ever mentioned and they'll suddenly appear and they'll insult you and they'll say critical things about you and they'll link to past offenses as though it's some sin that they have a list of somewhere and they'll just be abusive about you but then you look at the flair and you look at the name or maybe you've RES tagged them and you see that it was someone who just didn't like that you did an article about TSM before. The, the level of obnoxious and borderline stalkerish behavior and cult-like behavior from them, again, goes beyond pretty much any other fan base as a collective. There are nutters, lone nutters in other fan bases, but this collective behavior only really makes up the TSM fans, from my experience of the better part of a decade at this point in time. They don't seem to realize that there would be much more criticism, and is in people's minds, if it wasn't so 
politically and financially inexpedient for people to publish it. Now, that isn't an issue for me. Like, for example, this video could get downvoted all over the fucking place. It doesn't matter to me. I have subs who will watch the video. It will have some degree of success because I've managed to connect with a lot of people and people understand my core values and ethics and have, have become interested in my perspective. So I can overcome, first of all, the Reddit downvotes. And secondly, that doesn't kill my career. And thirdly, I'm not afraid to publish things that may be popular and may not do well. I can, I'm lucky enough, I'm very lucky in as much as I make enough from other areas of my career that I can do pieces of content that I know won't succeed. That's not always the case for the younger guys. I would argue they could do it, but they'd have to have a lot more productivity and be capable of producing more content, which is obviously more difficult. So I can understand I'm sympathetic to their position. TSM fans talk as if Reggie was their brother, not Dan Din's. Like everything he does is excused away. They speak as if they know the intimate details of his mind on topics he has never spoken about. And he has become this ridiculous, like icon within the TSM mythology mythos this talisman that is the whole reason why all the success happens in the team like we're supposed to pretend like reggie's such an amazing businessman and human that like it's not even that he has bjergsen a fucking transcendent nalcs player who's probably season on season very few instances where he wasn't clearly the best player in the entire LC nalcs but we're supposed to pre pretend like if he hadn't gotten bjergsen he'd have just gotten some other mid lane and they'd also had the same success and made every nalcs final and won so many championships i mean this is just ridiculous like yeah you know what i think the guy has done a pretty good job and i think he certainly surrounded himself with the right people i think that's one of his best skills and he's known when to pull the trigger to get rid of people and when to stick with someone and when to get someone who didn't look awesome not that often he's done that but he's done some pretty good moves but the idea that it's just him who's done it all and then if all we can excuse away all of his behavior like come on this is absolutely fucking ridiculous it borders on the way people treat like a fucking saint within the catholic religion Another reason why people despise TSM fans beyond their obnoxious behavior, which is the real reason, is this their ridiculously inconsistent logic. It's a mixture of inconsistent logic, which bleeds in hypocrisy, which the operating mechanism for at all times involves moving the goalposts. You just change the definitions or what your criteria is so that it always favors TSM. They have no philosophy or reason guiding the direction of, of where they go, except I'm going towards TSM and away everything that's not TSM. In fact, they make the world into this black and white dichotomy, like fucking Manichaeanism or something, where it's like, there's only TSM and anti-TSM. That's like the universe to them. They, they don't understand that where well, you can have TSM, you can have Cloud9, and you can have, the, and these are good teams, and you can have some medium teams, you know, the world, uh, how normal people see it. So, for example, when Hauntzer has splits, where he has the best top lane stats as an individual player and collectively, those then mean he's the best top laner. But if Jensen tops the stats and all the relevant stats and most of the stats, suddenly that means nothing. Stats mean nothing. And you can, in fact, even spin it as a negative if you're a TSM fan. Say, look, this just shows how, because he has all the best stats, but his team hasn't won. That just shows that he's selfish. And, and you know what? He it even shows how he lacks the character. As a human, he actually is a failure as well because of this success. Like, he, he lacks the character to play unselfishly and play for his team. And hence, when his team loses, it's his fault. And if, if they don't win as many titles as TSM, it's all on him, actually. It's not that he's an extremely good player who at times has played for not that good teams, but elevated them. And individually, in a very specific way, might be a better player, even if Bjergsen as a whole team player could have some elements which are better. No, no, it can't be anything reasonable like that. No, you have to find a way to take the same principle that you used to elevate a player and now use it to destroy a player, even though his are also positive in the same regard. Players are always overrated or sometimes down, downright treated like they're shit but magically become great when they put on a TSM jersey. The analogy I'd give here, okay, would be obviously we know in the last 10 years, the fans of Kobe Bryant and the fans of LeBron James are a nightmare, and especially when they communicate with each other, right? Because all the Kobe fans don't just say, like, I think Kobe is better for these reasons. They go, Kobe is objectively better, and LeBron is, in fact, a bitch, and way, way worse, and not even comparable. But I tell you something, if tomorrow LeBron James joined the Lakers, oh my God, so many of those fans would magically have always loved him, would say, no, well, they're two different players, you know, you can't compare that way. You know, they would just make all these ridiculous, hypocritical turns from how they behaved before. That is what TSM fans do routinely with players when they join TSM. You know, the moment before they put on a TSM jersey, there are all these negative things and there's not that much that's good about them and they're overrated and they're pieces of shit. But then when they put on the TSM jersey, magically it's all transformed. Now, the most hilarious example is obviously Doublelift because for years and years, he was the primary enemy of TSM fans because he was on CLG, the primary rival for most of the time historically. He also talked a lot of shit 
He was also better as an AD carry than all of TSM's AD carries for most of history. Therefore, they went to talk shit for that reason. And his team was losing. Therefore, TSM's winning. You're losing. Since you're talking shit, let's attack you even harder. And obviously, you're just pathetic. And you're the reason why they failed. It's like worse than the Jensen scenario now. But the moment he joined TSM, suddenly, I always kind of liked him. I was always a big Lift Lift fan. Oh, I love watching his stream. Oh, yeah. You know what? He should have been on TSM earlier. Imagine if he'd been there with the special stuff, even though they defended fucking Wild Turtle and Chaos and all of them before he got there. Like, it's actually ridiculous how that is one of the most hilarious examples of how two faced TSM fans are. Then, Hauntzer when he played for Gravity, was just a good player who barely had any attention. No one raved about him. But suddenly, instantly an elite level player as soon as he joined TSM. Now, part of that's because Dyrus fucked for him, sure, and people worship Dyrus in their own way, although he's also the whipping boy, magically, of their fans and their fan base. That's one of the few players they were allowed to rag on, but only they're allowed to rag on him then. That's another great thing, by the way. So they can be, they can completely blame Dyrus for the entire game being lost. There's another area of hypocrisy. But if you ever critique the fact that he's not the best top player, in fact, he played like shit sometimes toward the end of his career, you're just a hater and piece of shit. And how dare you say that about legendary Dyrus? Then you've got to consider another ridiculous example, Sven Skerin, because when he did that thing where he said he put his name as something that could be considered quite offensive to Asian people and was, was somewhat rude to that person from like Taipei or whatever the fuck, Taiwan, when he then got that ban... He, the amount of abuse he got as a racist and this toxic EU player. But again, now that he's joined TSM, magically he's just a great guy and everything's fine. It's always the same pattern, the same playbook, the same blueprint. You either, as a TSM fan, when they join TSM, you either rewrite your whole opinion on them or they magically become improved or matured as human beings, not just even as like players, as human beings. They go undergo this massive you know, dark night of the soul and development as humans and they, they mature entirely within the span of a split. We're talking two to three months of just having a TSM jersey on your body and playing League of Legends the majority of the day. That evolves you as a human being, like going to some fucking two-week re retreat in South America and taking ayahuasca every day and working with a shaman to unleash the dark side of the fucking shadow of your spirit and battle through to become a spiritual warrior. That's what they think putting on, putting on a TSM jersey and joining the team does. And why? Because of stuff like, well, Reggie won't stand for that. So apparently they think Reggie's just in there like that woman out of fucking billions just working with him psychologically. So what's going on there? Let me in. Let me in. Let me, let me see. Why do you act that way, man? You know, have you ever thought maybe there's something inside you that if you let it out, people won't judge you? Like they think that's going on. It's not. That happens like once or twice, what? Every split maximum. Likewise, it applies to skill. When a TSM player joins TSM, magically they're just way more skilled, they're way better as a player. And the reason that is never cited for context is they never imagine it's because they now have better teammates. They never imagine that they have more resources to work with now. But what's great is when they leave, because when they leave, the same effect applies in reverse. So when it special leaves, Suddenly, ah, he's on curse, ha ha ha, loser, ah, fourth, ha ha ha, you are not as good as all the players that are in TSM, ah, you are no longer as good. They'll excuse away any amount of abusive behavior that Reginald had towards especially, even though that was fucking disgusting. And they did that even when he was in, in TSM, by the way. They don't care about the players, they care about TSM as like a concept in their mind of being winners, etc. While Turtle, magically, when he's on Immortals, they can suddenly acknowledge all the faults of him and the fact that he's clearly held back from being elite. And actually, he's a as much as he has some strengths which help his team, he is collectively can be a weakness to a team that wants to be world class and compete outside of NA. Reginald, apparently, this is the logic of TSM fans, should be forgiven for any negative behavior he's expressed over the years. It should all be forgotten and it should never be brought up again because he was younger and it was years ago. But that doesn't apply to anyone else in the entire scene. So they can constantly reference me. They can say about things they think I've done that were wrong. They can reference comments I made three years ago. Years and years after the fact, in threads that have nothing to do with the topic. In threads that aren't even about me, but someone just happens to bring me up. That's somehow fair game. But it's not to talk about Reginald, because, you know, be, be reasonable. You know, he's matured and he's changed a lot as a person. No one else is allowed to change, though. We're all the same as we were five years ago. But Reginald, again, he's undergoing incredible change. He's like the fucking, a tesseract of, like, 
infinite possibility that exists outside of our dimension and you only ever see one small facet of him at a time and if you could perceive outside of reality as tsm fans do and connect with him on some spiritual dimension in the fucking in the crown chakra then you would understand what reginald is and and the the kind of multi-dimensional being he is whereas the rest of us are all one-dimensional black and white cartoons of a caricature of what you thought we were five years ago that's the logic of the tsm fans and how they apply it so similar to all of the players, by the way, any players comments or toxicity is to be brought up forever. Oh, by the way, until they join TSM, like don't dare bring up fucking Svenskare and racism now, because then it's off limits. If he didn't ever join TSM, if he'd be on H2K right now, and then he'd become the best jungler in the world. How fucking dare you not bring it up? That should be the only criteria to judge him off, right, TSM fans? If a TSM player makes a cocky comment, so a current example would obviously be double if, but it's happening with other ones, or same, some sort of an extremely delusional, you could say extreme confidence one. That's just confidence. That's just them knowing that they're good players and daring to, to say, I'm the best, I want to be the best. You can argue it away any way you want if you're a TSM fan. But if anyone else makes one, they're a disgustingly arrogant person who actually is betraying what a terrible, corrupt human being they are to the very core of their being. And thus, they deserve unending scorn and mockery, as I say, unending, till the end of time. So the contrast here, obviously, is double if. Because when he was in CLG, suddenly his trash talking was pathetic and disrespectful and he should shut up because he's not the best player in the world. And you know what? He Even if he was the best in NA briefly, he wasn't as good as Koreans. But you know what? If he's on TSM, <laughs> it's just hilarious. Oh, that double if. He's just incorrigible. Oh, you got to love him, though, haven't you? Because he, he just, he just, oh, it's hilarious the way he just bantered that guy. Oh, it's all just banter, isn't it? It was never banter when I was making any jokes. Everything I've said is apparently just to be put on paper as a manifesto. It was never a joke involved. Even if I say it was, they get to decide what I mean, right? If TSM don't win, <clears throat> then their players, some logic again, can still be elite or even the best. But if TSM do win, other players can't be elite or the best because they didn't win. TSM won. So that means TSM's players are the best. You see how the logic and the goalposts just change completely. When it's time for international tournaments, people treat TSM the way that TSM fans treat lesser LCS teams. So they go, right, well, these Korean teams are much better. Of course, they're going to win. If you put these top Korean and Chinese teams in a group with TSM, TSM's going to have a hard time, or they're going to have to get re do really well here. Guess what? When you treat their team relative to the rest of the world, the way they te treat teams within NALCS relative to TSM, they go fucking ape shit and throw their prams out, toys out of the pram. You were expected to delude yourself that any chance they have is equivalent to the best teams from Korea. So China consistently outplacing TSM at World Championships <clears throat> and MSIs never is to be spoken about. It's not, it's not relevant. They never get any respect to the Chinese region. They're just not that good. Mm. There's like Koreans, and then it's right after that is NA. And their le level are better than China at all times. Their arguments don't even hold up over time. Their arguments have to change over time, depending on what the placings are, because that's how they figure things out. They go, what is the result? Does this favor or not favor TSM, right? Reverse engineering opinion. So when TSM finished top eight at season four Worlds in 2014, that should just stand for the placing. You should say, ah, no, 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 it doesn't matter the context. Doesn't matter the context. Their finish is all that matters. They finished top eight, top eight team at that tournament. They ignore the ridiculous context that they had one of the easiest groups ever by having no Korean and they had Svenskeren getting banned for half the games from SK, which decimated the rival team to theirs, which would have been competing with them for the second or first spot in the group. Now, you're not supposed to look at that and bring any out context up. In fact, you should go the other way. You should even say that there was room for the possibility TSM could have done even better and got an even better bracket draw and that they should have won games they didn't win. But any other year... You should look at the context of group draw strength now, mate. Season five, we're in the, they were in the group of death. You know, they were a, a wild card type team. Not literally, but sort of. And then they got, they'll pull three, so it is with the wild cards. And then they got some of the hardest people. By the way, they did. That's, you're supposed to apply context uni uni universally and uniformly. So in season five, well, that was the group of death. So placing doesn't matter there. Doesn't matter that origin place better. Season six... Well, they had a group of death, didn't they? So how can you judge their placing? You know, they could still be just as good as H2K, even though H2K made top four, and TSM went out in groups, because, you know, a much harder group. The logic's completely changed. But if it's a European team who's in the same circumstances, both ways, 
Suddenly it all switches. So H2K shouldn't talk about when they finished top four at the last Worlds. Higher than any TSM in fucking history, by the way. The TSM team has never finished top four at Worlds. They, you shouldn't talk about that because they had an easy group. By the way, they had a harder group than TSM did in season four. Because they had EDG, the number one seed from China. Actually, wait a second, were they the number one seed at that point in time? Did they win this? I think they did, yes. I think they were the number one seed at that point in time. They had H2K, and they had AHQ. I don't know why I said H2K. They had AHQ, who was a very competent team from LMS, who had long experience and had even been top eight of the last fucking worlds. Now, contrast that to who TSM had. They had the one of the, at the time, thought to be one of the lower, well, was one of the lower seeds from China, and a team that had no expectations going into that world, so that was the best team in their group. Then they had SK, who hadn't done well in, they'd never won LCS, and they had their one of their best and key players, arguably the star player of the team, literally banned for half the games. Much easier group. And yet H2K not only got at that, but placed better in the tournament. Now, it got, yeah, yeah, but what about who they draw in the round of eight? Oh! That's interesting. I thought we weren't supposed to look at the context of results. You're just supposed to say it's who you top eight. It doesn't matter who you draw at any point in the tournament, right? Oh, but it does matter who you draw because they drew Samsung White in season four of TSM World. So the group draw doesn't matter, but the, the round of eight draw does matter. And you go the other way, group draw does matter for H2K. Oh, and round of eight draw matter now. Amazing how the logic switches, isn't it? Then we'll go and look at the other equivalent. So you know all the years when TSM were in a group of death, and that's fair, and you shouldn't judge them against other teams in the same tournament because they were in the same group. Look at the context, please, as TSM fans would say. But at the same worlds where TSM came top four, top eight, as if TSM would fucking come top four, top eight, and with a very easy group, well, there was a team called U Fnatic from Europe who were the second seed, and they got a group of death. They got a group where they had OMG, a very tough team to beat who were, had a lot of experience and ended up finishing top four, who were from China. They had Samsung Blue, one of the favorites to win the title, champion of OGN, two-time finalists at OGN. And they had LMQ, really good team fighting team from in NALCS, who had led the NALCS for most of the split. And by the way, had only lost to TSM by one game in the semifinals. They had that group. But you're supposed to just look and go, ha-ha, Fnatic went out in groups, TSM got out of the groups, TSM were better than Fnatic. You're not supposed to look at the group strength or the context of the group. Likewise, if I write an article, this is the TSM mentality, if I write an article celebrating TSM, something they did in the past, some great accomplishment, or a player in TSM, or I defend TSM as I did, for example, when people tried to make out like they were always shit because they did badly at the last Worlds in the article I did, then in that scenario... You know what? All of a sudden, yeah, that's a good article, that. That's what they'll say. Some of them will claim, oh, I was always kind of a fan of Thorin as well. I'm glad he came round to the right side and the right way of seeing things. Some of them will be like, finally, real journalism. But if you critique them, and I've obviously done that many times, suddenly I was always a hater. I've always downplayed all TSM successes, they will claim, even though factually you can ch prove objectively that's not the case. And I'm only doing all of this because of the basis of a personal grudge, either with Reginald from years ago, even though, again, that wouldn't make sense because why wouldn't I downplay Bjergsen then? Or just a hatred of TSM as an organization. It's never the fans, by the way. It's never their behavior that might provoke being negative towards them. But they provoke the idea that, in fact, sometimes they will claim, oh, because he hates TSM fans, he downplays the team. I guess they do do that, actually. Even though I've obviously never done that. They never stop to think that there is no historical basis for me to dislike TSM as a team. Now, I can dislike TSM fans, and I'll talk about TSM fans that way. And I can dislike Reggie. I can talk about Reggie that way. But TSM as a team, I have no historical basis to dislike. I mean, I came in when they were the best team in NA, you know, said they're the best team in NA. Whenever they've been the best, I've acknowledged them as the best. When they're not the best, I acknowledge that they're not the best. Internationally, they have never been close to the best. Therefore, I've never acknowledged them as close to the best. I've been pretty consistent throughout the years, and I've applied the same razor of logic to all teams and all things. In fact, here's the mad thing is that you really can't find any reason in the early days why I would suddenly just dislike TSM, aside from their fans and Reggie. But at the same time, though, remember that I'm actually just irrelevant. And uh, my career's flagging, and I just do things for clicks from TSM fans, despite the fact they can never stop discussing me, bringing up old things I've said, constantly addressing me directly, personally. There's, P there's TSM fans I've never responded to, who, if you use the search function on Twitter, have messaged me like 200 times over the last four years.
Like the, these people are ridiculous. Yeah, but the same people will tell me in 2017, I'm irrelevant. You know, even though I was actually literally on fucking television in America for an esports show as, as an expert. That's how I was built. I've got one of the biggest to- talk shows in League of Legends. I've consistently done massive numbers in League of Legends. Again, I'm talked about, considered someone where people are interested in my perspective. It's not about, claim, I'm not claiming I'm the most knowledgeable person in League of Legends, but people are interested in my knowledge and my perspective. Now, the funny thing is I've never disliked TSM as a team. Just looking at the players and the team, they aren't even a special team to me in any way in history, for obvious reasons. Like, they've never been the best. I've cared about Korean teams significantly more so. I put them in their rightful place, relative to the West and to history. Now, I've certainly disliked their fans, the ones that are vocal, the ones that don't speak. Why would I not? I, wouldn't, I don't know who they are, do they? They don't exist for me. I've certainly disliked Reginald when he's been a dick to me in the past. I've disliked Loco when he tried to fuck with me and my friend publicly, repeatedly. I've disliked Dyrus very briefly when he acted like a bit of a passive-aggressive little bitch, despite the fact I had given him a lifetime of reasonable critique, which often involved defending him and being an apologist for his behalf, when his own team fans were fucking wrecking him unfairly because of the roles he was subjected to and put into in his team, and the fact that he was a great role player, but sometimes the team wasn't good enough to win. They will spin it so that I, and others, hate TSM just universally, just, just de facto, for no good reason. No matter what the player changes are, because they love TSM in that fashion. And to make it so that they are included somehow within that godhead of their cult of TSM. And it makes up this little group dynamic when really people like I, me and others, just dislike douchey little loudmouth fans who've accomplished nothing themselves and have no point to offer other than keyboard bashes which seemingly never end, which are just to insult and degrade others. That's why nobody likes TSM fans. Welcome to Thorns and Thoughts. Unfortunately, I don't have any content. The man already speaks his mind, but I ain't gonna stop you now. You already, you, I, mean, I assume you saw a pretty fucking good video. All right. And you're already on the man's channel. So stay a little while longer. I see you're comfortable. And just check a few more out. 